works as a canvas for creative work as well as it's a very fundamental experience, human experience as well True. so how do you see food inside and outside of art see food food cooking is an art yeah it's an art form and um, and that is one such art form which is there in every house from generations to generations and generations uh, whether it is cooking done by a mother or a grandmother or a maid or a khansama or a chef in a, in a so cooking is an art form only thing is we try to um, and it's a basic need also mm. so True. most of the time we ignore the art form of the part and try to fulfill in our day to day life as a basic that you have to eat mm. you have to eat healthy tasty food Sustainers. so sustain yeah. so we sometimes we forget that art part of it but uh, i think every housewife every mother every chef who cooks in a professional kitchen sometimes they really want to do enhance other factors in the, in the, in in that uh, in the her kitchen or in their kitchen so that different textures different colors different types of shapes and sizes come into picture and then then it creates a art so touching upon that same subject again um you know i mean just like art works around the conversations that surround us um the palate etc is all dependent on that this food around also let's say your menu choices do they also revolve around time seasons does the palate also revolve around what's now absolutely you- food food always always revolve revive around uh, around season right and it was not only in indian cuisine and all different cuisine seasonality played a very very important part of uh, uh, there are ingredients for different seasons right. there are flavors for different seasons there are temperatures for different seasons there are colors for different season in food right so um chilies winters it goes slightly up summers it goes really down when you used to say in every ingredient your grandmother used to say tasir hmm. there's something called that this thing is good when you have cold you don't eat this hmm. when you are a fever hmm. you don't eat that summers you don't eat this so all these things it is all revolved around season availability of ingredients what is locally available it was never like you get things from uh, out of season like nobody eats mangoes in december right um you get mangoes in december but now we we say it's it's not correct to eat yeah. mangoes in december so yes food is very very about seasonal and nowadays food like fashion this is the vegetable of the year right <laughs> it it it, is, it yeah. happens like that this is the vegetable of the year this particular sauce will work for this year this particular cuisine is in rage for next 2 years so these things happen you know you're first eating from your eyes right then you start trying out whatever you what is whatever is on your plate sometimes what you see when when you look at it in the first look it's not it looks unappetizing so you you don't even bother trying it so plating is such an important part and that is where the creative and the the creative aspect and the art aspect kind of comes into picture because you know we've created all these different 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 elements to make to bring a dessert together and then we get a canvas like a plate to showcase that on 
so i think plating is extremely important because if it if it doesn't uh, look good if it doesn't have a part of your personality the you know when you look at a plate of food in front of you you should know who's made it it should be like that it should be a re- reflection of a chef's personality you know a plating is literally that for me when it has to have a part of my personality in it so i think it's a very very important aspect of the whole experience together getting inspired from a plate or a form of art like um I love yellow uh, well you can see uh, around me and uh, this is this is an uh, this is a artwork of just having fun with colors I I did in 2017 where um I was heavily drawn by the Gutai movement and when I followed it and I read more about it there was something which just felt good and i was drawn towards it when i saw the first traveling exhibition in paris um i saw many different forms of the gouta movement uh but shiraga which who did the 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 artwork using paint uh and using his hands and foot and legs you know as a as as a action to uh for the strokes using his his inertia um so i think for me this painting what i did was a form of reflection that there is no direction there is no discipline there is no right or wrong it's just like this is my action and the viewer's reaction is something which translate into this form of art where i tried using different food pigments from um, squid ink being black to saffron being bright yellow and i combined them together and kind of blended them in a way where they in, they kind of just were very similar like when i actually kept the pasta in front of the artwork i was blown away myself i was this is so immersive you are you you reading a pasta which is actually on the wall in a very similar way so i think it was so for me it was polak meets gutai uh in the kitchen on the pasta roller so that was a lot of fun uh i made a lot of breads um i remember during the lockdown uh getting inspired from fontana where i did different strokes and you know different patterns of scoring on the bread uh, which were very very interesting some came really really good some were terribly bad bad experiments but everything was eaten and not thrown um i also did uh, blue cheese scones recently uh, inspired by uh, a plate uh, which was a limited edition uh, malevich inspired plate where i wanted to form a composition on the plate where the triangular scone matched the circle and the lines on the on the plate and it just looked so stunning uh when i served it like nobody wanted to eat it uh, of course everybody was photographing it but i think that's the joy i think uh which which i think all my friends and uh, people at home enjoy because uh, meals at home are not i take every meal very seriously i make sure that if uh, i'm eating at home i make sure i do my own table setup and uh with the kind of mood that i'm in probably so dots are something which you will see very very uh dominant from my wardrobe to the house to even the uh dishes that i'm doing in fact uh, another pasta that i did was with all dots and on a bright yellow plate uh on a little napkin which i bought from tokyo from the kasuma uh museum so it just was like an illusion of dots uh, and all of this i think during the lockdown was a lot of fun for sure leftover campaign both these campaigns combined um tell a story about how i want to promote certain ingredients that were used earlier um like bajra jwar um you know any of any millets that i use pretty much daily um those are things that i want the younger generation to kind of get to know um i want them to cook recipes via a slow cook- cooking method which you know we've kind of forgotten um because of the rush in life because of globalization because of the many restaurants that are open 
and i thought that the lockdown period was perfect to get people to go back to some traditional recipes to go back to some traditional authentic um, ingredients and most importantly maximize the ingredients so using the whole ingredient um it could be root to shoot or it could be head to tail depending on what you're eating um preserving the skins and making a stock or using dal chawal and making a mulligatani soup the next day you know just because you have dal chawal in your fridge and you don't want to eat it again so a lot of campaigns have run and they've got a great amount of um support and i think most importantly people have put it into practice that's the best thing rice doesn't the indigenous rice actually doesn't move much from one place to another place because there are many laws around it like you can't transport them by train that we realize while walking on it um so the this was our whole idea I I don't think uh, I can talk about a particular art because I think that it can be um many different things I'm very much into music so sometimes music and it's all I mean it, I sometimes music can inspire me it has nothing to do with what I produce but maybe some kind of emotion or something it evokes and then I'm cooking something and that emotion is driven uh, like is driving me that happens a lot with me um uh, mostly I f- think that with me music is one form and the second uh, i am also like very much into like painting so i um, also uh, sometimes some something just strikes me and then you want to create something with the same kind of it, it, it's a res- it's resonate in the same way but it is not it might not be like it has no similarities you can't say that this has any anything to do with this so i find that I think another thing is that in in a lot of people's heads, food can't be art unless there is a either there's a visuality or there's a, a um, I don't know this kind of thing that you are painting with you know vegetable dyes or whatever sort of a thing. Uh, also, I guess that goes back to visuality. But I think it's important that food engages so many other senses than the visual, right? And art also can engage all the other senses i feel that there's an argument to be made that there is an there is art in the way a meal sort of goes from the beginning to the end what what you eat after what how how you are led through your palate into various emotions like various emotions are evoked in you in the same way that a painting or a piece of music will evoke certain emotions in you i think food can do that But I mean, they cook here. They cook a very um, light kind of. I mean, the the recipes what they have originally got from their uh, kitchen. But they sometimes, you know, try to uh, incorporate these uh, kind of ingredients. <laughs>